best in former Limerick FC and very decorated striker in the League of Ireland and the NIFL, uh, in Stephen O'Flynn. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight, Stephen. No problem. It's great to be on. Yeah, we're discussing, going to discuss your uh, career across both uh, sides of the border, Stephen. But we'll start off, I suppose, with your, your youth career. And I know you spent time, maybe upwards of three years, uh, with Wimbledon in England uh, as a young player. We all know about maybe the crazy gang and, and the the way Wimbledon was, even in the late 90s, when which coincided. Is it fair to say, or accurate to say, that around that time, you were coming to a time where Wimbledon were starting to struggle, maybe financially, and they were in relegation trouble at that period? Yeah, I think the first year I f- I went to Wimbledon. Obviously, I was 16, but they were in the Premiership. Um, Joe Kinnear was the manager. Um, and things at the time were actually pretty good uh, at Wimbledon. Uh, there would have been probably a mid-table kind of Premier League team, mid to lower, lower level. So, <coughs> excuse me. So going over there was brilliant. Uh, things didn't go so well. I think they invested big in the likes of John Hart and a, a few players like that, you know. Um, after my first year, I think it was my second year there. Um, things didn't go too kind of well. Um, and the, the long and the short of it, I suppose, I was good enough in the end. Um, that along with getting relegated, I think only, I think maybe two out of 23 players only got kept on uh, as for like professional contracts. Um, that was no... That was no consolation to me, um, but uh, a great time, had great experience, um, and as I say, some great memories fr- from Wimbledon itself, you know. I know they said that it was a, a tough schooling at that club for senior players coming in. Was that the same for, for underage and academy players? 100%, 100%. Uh, like, it was crazy. I went over, and I think one of my first days, had my shoelaces cut, I probably only one pair of trainers at the time. I'm going, what's going on here? Like, you know, I was yeah. I was kind of like this, I suppose, green coming from, from Mallow and you know, you're you're mixing with kind of all sorts, you know, you're you're probably meeting black people for the first time, you're meeting London people if well as from Turkey, you know, so you've all these <clears throat> I suppose different cultures and you know, different races and you you're just trying to gel together. And the next thing you walk in, they're trying to put deep heat in your forehead and cut your laces and stuff like that. You're thinking, what's this all about? Like, but you soon, you soon just, you kind of need to sink or swim. Um, and that, that fed down from the first team itself. Um, but again, after a few weeks, you're like, it's like a, it's like a big family. And it was, and it was brilliant. You know, it was, I suppose the years from 16 to 19, you're becoming, you're going from being probably, I suppose, a kid to a man, you know, so th- there were important years uh, development as a person as well, you know. Yeah, certainly. I know that you came back to Cork after your time with Wimbledon, but your, I suppose your first time playing first team football on a regular basis was, was actually here in Limerick, uh, Stephen, when you signed. I think Noel O'Connor was the manager at the time when you originally signed and you had a very good goal scoring record and you played under Mike Curley as well and I know your squad in 2003 came quite close uh, to get in promotion considering the and it was a really good achievement considering the financial strengths and the club was playing out of Pike Rovers at the time but you had a very strong 12-13 players in that squad came very close was was it disappointing I suppose in one way that you didn't go all the way even though the club wasn't ready to get promoted realistically yeah look it's still devastating because you know I suppose for me coming back from England it didn't work out of Cork City when I first came back uh Obviously, Noel O'Connor brought me down to Limerick. And again, probably the, the best period, you know, of my career, we, we'll probably touch on it later, but mm. was with Limerick, you know. Um, I kind of knew I was playing it week in, week out. But not just that. Uh, people from, just even from Pike Rovers, when, when I went down there and we were kind of playing, I didn't know what to expect. And, you know, the people around that, that club at the time, obviously Limerick were playing there and it just that real family environment and it, it just suited me and like the, the bunch of lads like I, th- I think there was like there was a, a good part of that squad that came from my 21st came down to Mallow so I, I still talk to a lot of boys this day you know and, and for me it's it's something that looking back it's you know it was disappointing maybe not to get over the line you know 
I think it was Derry. I think in in, in the end, we, you know, we missed out there. But um, you know, I'll draw in the first game and a, a four 0 defeat in the second leg. I think that's right. You know, I think you know. I suppose there wasn't much social media back then, and I think looking back now, it was maybe a. We probably should have won the first game. We probably had one or two chances. It was tight enough, but we probably should have nicked nicked the win. And I suppose you're going back up there, and they're probably happy to come out of come out of uh, Limerick with a with a draw, you know. So, and they were always going to be strong at the Brandy Red. But look, it wasn't to be for us. And again, kind of looking back, it's it's just one of them things. But you know, finally remember just the the players and the people around the club. Yeah, your goal scoring form uh, obviously came to the attention of your your hometown club then in, in Cork City, who, as you said, you had left in 2002 and were signed back then in 2004. Unfortunately, I think the week before the season started, Stephen, you had a, a serious injury which ruled you out of effectively the whole season with, with Cork City. That must still wrangle with you to, to this day that you didn't get a fair crack at it. Yeah, it does. Like, you know, having a few spells of Cork as well, I was kind of like, it just wasn't to be, um, and I, I'll always remember it was up in Terryland Park. But look again, it's I suppose character building. You're building your character up for your life, for you know, I suppose putting wise head. And you know, at the time, I probably I would like to think the way I think now. Obviously, that's hindsight, and and you can't. But look, it was disappointing um, because I'd started the preseason with Cork really well. Um, I was actually playing left side midfield, <laughs> and uh, I was suspended for I was suspended for the first game of the season, which I picked up too many yellow cards playing for Limerick, <laughs> and I ended up I was suspended for the first game of the following season, and what actually happened was um, I just broke my leg in Terryland Park, and again that set me back a year. But look again, you know these things can't. You know, can't be helped, and you just have to pick yourself up and go again. You know, but I, it was it was devastating. You know, because I felt at that stage of my career, having a good spell at Limerick, it was my first time playing men's football that I was effectively ready to go um, in the Premier Division. But look, mm -hmm. again, that wasn't to be. You know, uh, in in some ways, you think that these things are meant to happen because obviously, then you signed for Stephen Kenny uh, with Derry City. You had two very good seasons there. Uh, we'll go on, I suppose, in a, in a couple of minutes, maybe to the, to the European nights. There was great European nights there for you and the team. One sore point, I suppose, and it, it feels probably like I'm bringing up all these at the home, but one sore point, I suppose, is that with the squad and the quality that you had, as it turned out, and the, and the team Stephen built, it must have been absolutely heartbreaking to probably just come up against two very good sides in Cork and Shelburne and to lose the title and last day in, in the space two years. I mean, that's just a, a heartbreaking stuff, really. I don't think that'll be done again. I, I I can never see. I don't think it might have it might have happened one season, but I can't remember when it's happened the same season or the same team in back to back seasons when you lose out on goal difference, and then I think we lost out two points. I think the the, the following season. Um, but yeah, that was probably the hardest. Um, you know, side of things when I was with Derry, you know, um, again, I think Derry actually put in a bid for me. I think it was 8,000 at the time or something like that. Um, I didn't even know where Derry was. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we went to obviously played him against Limerick. I knew it was in the north, but that's all I knew. We, or we played Limerick when I was with Limerick, or we, we played Derry when I was with Limerick. So, um, so going up there again, it was, I suppose, a thing of feeling wanted and, and all the rest of it. So we went up there and had two great seasons, but inevitably, I know a lot of people think of, I was successful and, you know, I won a few bits and pieces up there, but that was the biggest disappointment of the, of my time there. You know, uh, I thought we were probably good enough to win with the players that we had. Um, but look, the table doesn't lie. And the, the matter of fact is that we weren't, and we weren't good enough, you know, so, um, but again, more great experiences, you know, along the way, you know. Yeah, well, the, well, a few of the great experiences, obviously, you, you won an FAI Cup, you had a couple of League Cup wins, which Derry were, you are synonymous with around that period and have been in, in the last 20 years. 
So he had those successes uh, in cup competition and also then playing some huge nights where obviously you were central to a win over Gothenburg as well with Derry over two legs. You played Gretna, where I know from looking at interviews that you've done in the past and the rest of that Derry team have done in the past was a superb night and, and it really stuck it to Gretna considering uh, the way they spoke about you before the game. And then as well to play PSG. So that, that was an unbelievable journey in 2006. Yeah, again, great memories, you know, and like, again, looking back, I suppose at the time you're thinking nothing of it, you know, you, you, I wouldn't say you take it for granted because I, I was never one for taking things for granted, but I felt we were all kind of, a lot of the players that there at the time, the likes of, you know, Killian Brennan's and, you know, the likes of Mark Farn and, you know, Paddy McCourt was there and, Kieran Mann, Kevin Derry, Peter Hutton, you, you could just, David Ford, you could, you know, it was just amazing quality. And like, we were all just really having a great time. That's, that's my, my, my biggest memories of it were kind of like, it was great fun. No, it was hard to train, we used to train hard, but we used to go together um, as well, you know, and I suppose back then you could go and have a few points after a game on a, on a Friday night and, you know, like there was times we came into training on a Sunday where you'd still be hung over, but, <laughs> you, you train hard and, and that's the way it was like there was no there was no slacking and, and I suppose maybe maybe that's I suppose maybe that was our downfall but maybe that was the difference of us not getting across the league but as for the European nights they're the nights you want to play for you know it's probably the only time I do get jealous of players and the league and football in general now when I see the likes of Dundalk Shamrock Rovers you know all these clubs playing big nights in European football, you know, Bowes most recently as well, you know. Um, so that's probably, you know, some people say, I don't get jealous. I do, I'd love to be there. I'd love to be, because they're the big nights that everyone wants to play in, to test yourself against the, the best opposition, you know. So again, amazing, amazing nights and, um, you know, things that I can look back fondly of and, you know, maybe play it to my son when he gets a little bit older, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just, I suppose after the two years at Derry and, and you were very uh, highly thought of up there as well. And, and I remember obviously because I'd watched you as a young lad with Limerick and then, you know, watching you on the TV for Derry in those big games, I was saying, you know, you had made a big impact. And then obviously it just shows you what a change in manager can do because, you know, Stephen Kenny obviously left and went to Dunfermline and think at the time and Pat Finlay came in. And, and it was almost all of a shot then that you were gone from, from Derry City, which I suppose was hard to take at the time. Very. Um, probably in my career, the two lowest points, obviously injuries will always be a low point. Um, losing the league to Cork City the last game of the season and being released from Derry was very hard. They were probably so the lowest. you would have stayed there, Stephen, given the opportunity with, with the way it was going at the time. Pardon? I, I'm assuming, obviously, you really wanted to stay there, given the way it was going at the time. Yeah, like, well, there, was, there was a two-year contract put on the table. Stephen Kenny had offered me a two-year deal, and um, basically, things happened pretty quickly with him then, and I suppose we were still in negotiations. Um, Pat Fenling came in, and we had a meeting, I think, on the on the Monday, and he said he'd be in contact with the lads during the week, and next thing I had a phone call, a 20-second phone call, to say that he, he wasn't... Um, you know, going to sign me for the, the following season. So after thinking you're negotiating a contract and then to go on to, hang on a second, we've come second twice back-to-back -back years. We've had a great European run. I've been heavily involved, you know. You know, I could play probably left, left of a four midfield. I could play left of a three up top or down the middle. And I just thought it was a shock. And it was probably six or seven players that came in, but Pat came in and, that didn't go too too well for him. You know, I think he brought in his own players and stuff like that. But again, it's it was very disappointing, very hard, because I thought I'd, it was like a second home to me, um, to be honest. Um, I'd spent, barring, I suppose, Limerick. It was the most that I've been away from home, you know, the time that I've spent there. So it was like a second home to me. And uh, even to this day, I still have a lot of friends. But that was hard. But again, you're kind of... After that, I was kind of like, look, I just need to play football. And I was probably, I'll be honest, probably for two or three months after that, I kind of, kind of lost the head a bit. I didn't know what I was, didn't know what was next for me. 
Yeah, I know that I know that you signed for Galway in the aftermath. Um, the goal scoring record actually was quite good in the time you spent with Galway. But was that kind of a was that a period where, that you didn't relish because obviously you're coming back off off those highs with Derry? Um, what was the experience like with Galway then when you were there? Um, again, brilliant club, like you know, really loved it. Um, loved Galway as a city. Um, probably enjoyed it too much, if truth be told, you know. Um, Not the first person, uh, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you know, so like it's kind of like I suppose I came down there and Tony Cousins was the manager at the time. He came in and you know the one thing uh, like they had a great setup. We trained up in Salt Hill and you know the pitch was amazing and it was like a proper football ground. You know, I used to love playing there. You know, but again, I suppose I had a few injuries. Again, down to myself, I'd say you know just not living my life right and maybe what I should have been doing at the time um, but again great memories great friends and at the end of the day people I know it's a game and you want to win things and stuff but do you know what your friends are more important than medals and that's something that I've always kind of said um, I trade the few medals that I have for a few good friends you know and that's so again good good memories of it but towards the end it got sour um, I think there was a lot of players there including myself, who were on probably bigger money than the, the club could probably pay. Um, I had I had hernia problems, and basically the club tried to get me out because I was on their wage, but mm. um, uh, I tried to get the PFAI involved. Pretty much got no help from them. I uh, was told, just take a pay up and leave, pretty much. Um <clears throat> didn't get kind of what I wanted in, in, in that and eventually I, I had to just go and get a, a double horny operation um, off my own back and take a loan from the credit union, you know, so that's after that then that's that's where that kind of went, you know, so. Seems to be the reality of, of what a lot of players had to deal with, especially in the League of Ireland, which is something, yeah. you know, obviously they're trying to change, uh, Stephen. I know then, you know, following that operation and, and following a while, Pat Scully was in charge with Limerick you went to Limerick in 2009. It was probably around the time where we didn't realise it, but it was the time Pat O'Sullivan was really starting to loosen the first strings with, with Limerick and, and he was starting to back Pat Scully. Um, you came back and it's probably fair to say it was an incredible uh, turnaround. You, I remember in, in one of your first games, you scored a hat-trick away at Shelburne and they probably didn't know what, what hit him on, on the night uh, with that. You scored 14 goals and 13 appearances and made the PFI First Division Team of the Year, which is incredible, really, considering it was just half a season you played. Yeah, again, I kind of, I'd said to myself that year, um, so I'll never forget it, I kind of made a promise to myself that year that I wanted to kind of get back because I hadn't played in a long time and I said, look, I want to get this operation, um, I want to get back playing and I kind of want to get a move, you know, and that's no disrespect to Limerick, but mm. I didn't, before I even joined Limerick, my obviously I wasn't playing, I was unattached, so I needed this operation and I flew, I was lucky enough, uh, a guy from Wimbledon, a physio who I knew, he was uh, the, the Queen's Park Rangers physio at the time. Um, and basically he got me in, so I, got, I took a loan from the credit union. I got my double hernia operation, uh, flew to England, um, got it done over there and just started going back, doing my own bits and pieces. And um, I suppose, I can't really remember how it kind of, how it all came about. Um, to be honest, I know I was talking to Shane Tracy, uh, you know, and I knew one or two boys because Shane was at, at, at Galway as well. And to be honest, I can't really remember how it came around, but I ended up going down and, and training. And uh, I think that's what kind of happened. I went down training at night and Pat said, look, we're looking to, you know, just get someone in, uh, you know, of your experience, I suppose, in that age. And, I did. I hit the ground running, and uh, again, brilliant. I kind of knew. I knew the crack. I knew the, the division. I, I was comfortable because I knew players that were still there, and you know, from the past and stuff. The likes of Paddy Porcel and stuff like that, and you know, Paul Finucane and you know, uh, Shane O'Donoghue. I think they were, you know, boys like that, and you know, Derek McCarthy. was down there, and you know, so there was a good, good squad of lads in there, and like to be honest, yeah, it was. It went more than. <laughs> more than well for me you know um it, it really did you know but again the people 
the people down there were, were brilliant. And that's, again, like even my dad has made friends, you know, that he still keeps in contact from the Limerick games. You know, I know there's really two supporters and they'd be still in touch even with my dad. So for for me, again, with my dad dri- driving me up and down to Limerick, you know, that was that was great. Uh, and again, look, a, a great season personally, but all these personally and it's all well and good. But as a team, that's what really made it special, you know. Yeah, and, and obviously we'll go on to, to your time where you got a second chance in Eng- England. But before that, I, I keep mentioning obviously your goal scoring and overall your goal scoring record is really good, but it, it's particularly good in your three stints with Limerick, uh, Stephen. And I suppose it's a question you get asked probably like, what made it tick with, with Limerick, I suppose, and that you you're, it was so good, your, your record there? Um, I think I've probably touched on it. I just felt as comfortable as I've been. I probably knew I was playing. Um, Again, I suppose people say maybe that was my level. Maybe that was just my level that I personally don't think it was. Mm. Um, I, again, I, you know, obviously, but I feel as if when I went to other clubs, you know, like, I suppose, with Derry, I played a lot on the left, which I didn't mind because we had such good players, you know, and, and that's okay. But the times I was at Cork City, you had the likes of, I suppose Kevin Doyle was there and, and, and stuff like that. And, hmm. you know, I suppose... Kind of the main man with Limerick, I suppose. Yeah, I think I think that probably helped, you know, that helped. But again, that has... It's like, I've kind of looked down through the years and, and again, we're probably touching... I've been at other clubs where I found it hard to get in and I'm, every training session I'm busting myself and I felt I was bang, banging my head off a brick wall. Um, so I can kind of see two parts of it, two sides of the coin. You know, Pat Scully and, you know, Mike as well. And, and Noel, they were all very good to me. You know, when I needed a day off, they'd give me a day off. This is even when I was younger, you know. So they kind of managed me well as well. Whereas I was at other clubs and, you know, you have to come train and you have to come train. And it became a chore. Um, whereas, as I say, every, that that togetherness of Limerick, I think that really helped me as well. Um, you know, so playing, so playing and knowing that you're playing every week just gives you the confidence to go, just to relax a little bit more and stuff like that. So I think that was that was a big a big thing for me, you know. Yeah, and you were part of a very good side then, we'll say, in, in the third time after your stint in England when you came back. Um, Pascal, you did manage to get Limerick promoted. You weren't there in that particular season in 2012. Um, but considering, I suppose, the squad that was there, when you include yourself, Joy Gamble, uh, Dennis Behan, Barry Ryan and the likes, would it be fair to say that that squad probably should have got promoted the year before? Um, yeah, I think it should have. Um, but again, thinking back, you know, we should have. Again, things didn't go well personally, kind of for myself. But um, I suppose for the, the players that we had, yes. But again, there was probably a little bit of transition. You know, I think we were starting to get a, a better caliber player, maybe. Um, you know, as I said, it was probably. A, a few more pounds been been spent and you know so I think that year again I suppose yeah we definitely wanted to go and now I that was it that was disappointed again on a personal note I, I cracked my kneecap against uh at a hairline fracture I was doing against Waterford and I forget it and again it was just kind of took the wind out of my own sails anyway for a while like you know um but that was that was the that was disappointing, like, you know, again, um, but I think there was things going on in the background of the club and kind of didn't really like what I was seeing either. But look, it was just one of them things and look, at Limerick got, got promotion, I think the following year, I, I think that maybe the following years or, or two, you know, so eventually, you know, they, they, they did make it, you know, and, um, you know, that was brilliant to see as well, you know. Yeah, it's, I know you said you you did, didn't like what you saw in, in some aspects uh, behind the scenes of the club. It probably took a few more years maybe to manifest itself. Um, maybe the, the overspending and the overambitious nature of what was going on uh, in Limerick. And the fact is, obviously, we uh, Limerick FC went into liquidation. Um, it's still there now after after an appeal and the whole lot. But that was probably, I suppose, uh, sad for yourself to see as well, as well as us supporters, to, to see the, the club uh, going through the wall effectively and leaving senior soccer. Yeah, it was very sad. Like, you know, I look, I don't know the ins and outs of what went on down there. And I know people, I suppose, closer to the scene will have their own conversations on that. 
But for me, Pat O'Sullivan was the man that tried to make things happen. You know, he poured his money in. Mm. Um, look, people might say, look, he should, he overspent, he done this. Uh, Pat would probably admit to himself he's not a soccer man. He's not a hundred percent. You know, he's not his background. Probably wouldn't be a hundred percent soccer from mm. from day down. But he he wanted to do something good for Limerick, not just the football club, but the community as well. You know, um, like we great like even Sun, when Sunderland came to to Tolman Park, like what an event that was. You know, yeah, and that was all part of. I know. I know it was for a Stephen Gagan and uh, kind of trust and stuff like that. But without Pat and without Limerick, he wouldn't have got the likes of Sunland. And you know, so there was a lot of good things happening as well. And I just thought myself, I think he was probably badly advised in, in certain stages as well. You know, but very sad to see. You know, because I would have been close to Pat myself. Um, you know, and I kind of know how much it meant him as a club now again I don't know what went on further down the line but I kind of knew that there was people behind the scenes and that probably shouldn't have been there you know that had been there an awful long time and probably didn't know what they were doing you know in relation to a few things but look that was very sad to see and um, I suppose look you've got Treaty United now and you know like it's brilliant you know it's brilliant even seeing and hearing about them seeing them doing so well so look um, disappointing on one front, but look, there's there's still senior soccer in Limerick, I suppose. Yeah, it's it's great that it came back after just one year where it looked like it was so uncertain. Uh, I know you said earlier on you made a promise to yourself as well, Stephen, around that time in 2009 after the Galway period that after you're, you were going to get that surgery and you were going to, to come back stronger. I'm pretty sure though you probably wouldn't have envisaged how quickly it did move and the fact that within a, a few months that you were actually going to Northampton uh, in England. Uh, did, did you envisage that? Um. Honestly, yes. Um, that's my sound surprising. Um, so, funny enough, I'd be big into kind of law of attraction and thinking positively and staying stuff. So, I was kind of big into that at the time, and I'd written down certain things that I wanted. So, I wanted to get my operation. I wanted to get back fit. I, I wanted to start playing football and enjoying myself again. And by the end of the year, I wanted to get a move, you know. Um, <clears throat> No, I wasn't thinking Northampton when I was thinking getting a move. I was thinking maybe, you know, a Premier Division club or, or, or something like that. And yeah. funny enough, funny or coincidentally, New Year's Eve, I got a phone call to say that I fancy going to Northampton for like a few days just for them to have a look at me. So it all kind of manifested itself, you know. Um, and I ended up going over there for a few days and just signed a short term contract. Yeah, I suppose I, I know that uh, Adi Akinfenwa was over there at the time and he'd become a bit of a, I suppose, a, an English lower league cult hero with his social media and and, yeah. and the type of character he is. Um, was it was it tough though, I suppose, because you were going over there mid-season in, in the English league? Was it tough to break in then? 100%. And I suppose going from finishing off at Limerick, not knowing, didn't really have no options, didn't, didn't kind of just thought maybe I was going back to Limerick. Um, Say so the season probably was over a month or so. It would have been maybe, yeah, maybe even more. I think the for November, yeah, about two months nearly, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of uncertainty because I suppose people didn't know what was going on with Limerick at the time as well, and you know, are they, are they going to keep on putting the money in, or like what what was going to happen? And um, guess what it was? But to get a call from I suppose Northampton, I was like. In something similar, I didn't have a clue where I was, but you know, I'd done a bit of research into it, and um, you know, I was able to get a short term, a short term uh, move out of it, like you know, so um, again, not a great experience, you know, yeah, certainly. Um, I know we'll say we'll, we'll move on now to, to your time, I suppose, more so briefly, then in the Northern Irish, uh, we'll say first division championship that you won, and obviously, the went on to the Premier as well and was with the Crusaders to win that. But you've been with some big clubs over there in terms of Glen Thorne too. Um, I suppose one question I ask because I asked this Lee J. Lynch who's currently over there. He's a, a Limerick man. He's with Larne at the moment. And uh, I asked him maybe the, the comparison, Stephen, between uh, the two leagues. I mean, what would you say is there maybe is there a big difference in standard or what would be your own view on that? Um, what did Lee himself say? <laughs> Not a joke. <laughs> <in that. laughs> but, uh, no, I'm... Um, 
I suppose, look, it, it is getting more professional. You know, that, that definitely is happening. I suppose nine years ago when I first started off with Institute, it was basically, it was only fellas getting a few quid for playing a game on a Saturday. Um, then, I suppose, when I, when I joined Crusaders, you still had that train two days a week. I was still part-time, you know. Um, it has moved on in the last few years. To, there's a few more clubs, get, you know, after going full-time. Um, so it is getting that bit more professional. Um, I, would have, I wouldn't have said that maybe five, even five years ago, um, that it was still kind of a part-time kind of, you know, go drinking at the weekend, you know, train Tuesday and Thursday night. So that would have been the biggest thing, the professionalism of down south, say, with teams, you know, would have been more, right, we're training, you know, a lot of more teams would have taken it more seriously down south. Um, but, like, again, more so now, again, as I said, without repeating myself, it's in the last few years, it's, the standard has, has definitely improved, like, since maybe I stopped playing, you know. Yeah, and actually there was there was another question I meant, meant to ask you earlier on as well about uh, your former manager in Stephen Kenny and his, his Irish exploits. Uh, I, I suppose on a personal level you were delighted for uh, Stephen Esbor, anyone that would follow the league even uh, over the years. Uh, we know he's come under pressure. Uh, would you be, be hoping that the FAI uh, stick with Stephen and, and hopefully he gets the chance to, to bring in these young players that he has been, to be fair? To be honest, I'd be hoping... You can hope for a lot for the FAI, or you can wish for what you know, one thing or another. They look, they make up their own mind, you know, regardless. You know, they've again people in place there, you know, down through the years have given crazy money to international managers when the League of Ireland is crying out for uh, mm. for money and infrastructure. Um, I think they've no other choice but to stick with Stephen, and I hope they do stick with Stephen. I think there's a lot of good players coming through and being honest, it's probably the first time I've been a little bit excited about watching Ireland as in, I think the development of the young or the young, some of the young players are now playing first team games at a younger age uh, and coming through um, whether they'll stick with them or not. I don't know, but who are you going to bring in? You know, that, that would be my question. Who, who are you going to give the job to? Um, what do you give it to the likes of, Jose Mourinho or Jorgen Klopp or Pep Guardiola, you still with international football, you're still dealing with the players you're you're have you have, you know. So um, you know, like I think when they played the I think it was the, their last international camp, the three games and something like nine days or something like that. So he wouldn't have even been able to do any coaching with him. Yeah. You know, and I don't mean coach one to one, but shape and stuff like that you know it's a short period of time they would have literally been playing games light warm like cool down sessions and going again so it will take time but we just need to be patient like to be honest we've we've been watching crap football for the last 20 years pretty much now we have got to some tournaments and that's what it's about at international level um but again we've been to some tournaments and we've been embarrassed you know um I know the FAI would say, yeah, it's about getting to the tournaments. And I do get that. But when I look at other sports, and you know, it's about engaging the, the kids. It's about engaging the, the people that, you know, to get going to games, to actually go, do you know what? I'm actually enjoying them trying to play football and playing the right way. That would be my set, my mindset of it. So I'd leave it with him and just see, you know, he, I think things will turn because the players will gain more experience and, and things will come good. Yeah, I certainly agree with you on that and, and I hope that is the case. On a final note, I suppose, um, I know that you're retired now, uh, Stephen, from football following your stints in the, the Northern Irish uh, Premier League as well. Uh, you've mentioned, obviously, that the fact that, you know, you regrets in terms of maybe, you know, injuries and the likes, but there's nothing that can be done about those. As a whole, though, when you look back at your career, uh, how do you feel about it? Um, I feel, as I, I suppose, I haven't really, I haven't really sat down and went. Oh, do you know what? I've not went through like every, like the clips and. But do you know what I do? Like, say, I was in Northampton for a period of time. I'm, I've made like one of my best mates. Now you know from there, um. 
I'd look back and I would say I'd hope I'd hope I like to influence or maybe touch people um, no matter where I've went whether I'd like to think it was in a positive attitude um, I'd like to think no matter what I've done I always tried to win and give my all um, there's obviously things I should have probably done better and, and all that but in the main I think um, if I've touch people or if I've given people a night that they'll remember forever whether it was Shelburne a hat trick in Shelburne or whether it was a goal against Scottenburg or you know whatever like that or whether it's just a conversation after a game I'd like to think that look I've touched you know people in in a positive way Um, as for winning things for me it wasn't winning games is great and all the rest of it but the reality is in football you, you can't celebrate the highs for too long, you know, on it goes, on it goes again, and especially when you're on a good side, you know, because you just, it's that intense. So, I've enjoyed it, I've enjoyed my career, I, I've had a few ups, lots of downs, but I've enjoyed it, and you know what, I've made some great friends, and even to this day, I can travel all around Ireland with a, you know, and I can, I can call someone up, and you know, obviously the amount of clubs I've paid for, and, and for me, that's, that's that's nice, you know. So um, I'm based in Carrick now, obviously, but uh, that's what I'd say. I, I think I've really enjoyed that, and you know, from from Limerick to Derry to to across the water, just making friends were were one of the big points. And as I say, if I if I've given people a few memories along the way, well, that's even that's even happy days as well. Well, you're certainly fondly remembered in, in Limerick and, and for ourselves, uh, that's for sure, Stephen. I know you'll be in a lot of conversations uh, from League of Ireland circles uh, over the years. So uh, thanks very much for joining us and I suppose we wish you the best in, in your uh, retirement from football, which I know has, has gone on the way now and, and the best of luck. Um, and again, once again, thanks for joining us. No problem, it was a pleasure.